Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Today, we are here to do the very first TBR of 2024. I cannot believe that it is already time to do the very first TBR of 2024. As always, we are going to do challenge pulls and gameplay, but before we get into all of that, we have to recap how I did in December. Now, December, I actually had quite a pretty small TBR. I was being a little bit kind to myself, but we're going to go ahead and just run through how I did really quick, starting with the challenge pulls. The very first challenge pull that I pulled for the month of December was to read the next book in the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich, which in this instance was book number 16 called Sizzling 16, which I did read. The next challenge pull was to read the next book in the True North series by Serena Bowen, which was book number six called Fireworks, which I did read. The final challenge pull was to read After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I did read. Moving on into the gameplay prompts, the first prompt that I needed to satisfy was to read an intimidating book, and for that I chose Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver, which I did read, and unfortunately I did not enjoy nearly as much as I thought that I would. Next, I needed to read What Have We Done by Alex Finley, which I did read, and then the very final book that I needed to read to satisfy a gameplay prompt was Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez, which I did read. So December was a very successful TBR month. I am taking no punishments going into January. So we are going to go ahead and jump right into building January's TBR, starting with the challenge pulls. And y'all, this guy is going to be the star of the 2024 TBRs. If you are not familiar, this is my challenge cup and he contains a lot of little tiny slips of paper. And these little slips of paper encompass a lot of things. First, all of my physically owned TBR books are in here. Also, all of the secrets equals to all of my in progress series are currently in here. I also have all of the challenge prompts for all of the reading challenges that I'm trying to satisfy in 2024. And last but certainly not least, I have the reading like my subscribers project books in here as well. If you're not familiar, back in Bookmas, I want to say around December 9th, I made a video announcing the reading like my subscribers project. In that video, I asked all of my subscribers to leave a comment with up to five of their favorite books. Now how they chose to do their recommendations was completely up to them. They could leave their five favorite books of all time. They could maybe leave their five favorite books from the year. They could leave five books that they loved that they think I would love and they want me to read. They could make the decision on how they recommended their books, but they could leave up to five books down in the comments below. And all of the books that I haven't read yet or that I haven't DNF, we're going to go in here. So if you have not already left your recommendations, please head over to that video and leave them in the comments because I'm trying to read like as many of you as humanly possible. I have all of the recommendations that have been left so far in here and I will continue to add to this cup as I get more and more. I will try to remember to leave the link to the video down below for you so you can just easily hop on over there and leave your recommendations. Like I said, I will be adding those recommendations to this cup as I receive them. But because I have a lot of goals for 2024 that all concern this challenge cup, this is going to be the star of the show in 2024. And so because of that, I am upping the pulls that I make every single month. I'm going to be doing five. So I'm going to be doing five challenge pulls and six draws with my TBR game. And I'm going to double up where possible, but it could could potentially be where I have 11 different books selected in each of my TBR videos going forward. So I'm officially done rambling. We're going to go ahead and get into this. I am very nervous y'all because there are a lot of things in here that I have to satisfy. There are a lot of books in here that you recommended that I'm really, really nervous about. So we're going to see, but this has really been shaken up pretty good. And I'm just going to reach my hand in here. It's kind of small. So I'm just going to grab one. Okay. We got number one. All right. Okay. Let's see what it is. I think it's one of y'all's recommendations. Let's see what it says. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Well, this could not be more perfect. So I actually already had this on my TBR for January because it is the book club selection for the Bookworm Bitches book club that I moderate on Goodreads. This is the monthly selection for January. And so I was going to need to finally get to it in January. Y'all know how difficult it is for me to read fantasy because fantasies are books that I do like to sit and read physically. And that is not something that I have a lot of bandwidth to do. I have recently discovered immersive reading where I sit down and physically read them, but listen to them at the same time. And that's exactly what I plan to do with fourth wing and I'm just going to kind of take my time and get to it. It's not like crazy long. It's just about 500 pages. So it is nowhere near some of the chunky fantasies that I read in 2023. It's more about having the time to actually sit down and read it and listen to it at the same time, which is not always possible, especially during very chaotic, busy months. But I'm definitely going to give this a shot in January. So of course, I've been hearing a lot of absolutely amazing things about this. This was already on my radar, already on my TBR. And now I can consider this also a read like my subscriber book because Amanda recommended this to me. So this will be one of the books that I get to in January for sure. All right. Well, that was a success. I'm going to count that as a huge win. So let's go ahead and see what else I grabbed from here. All right. I got another one. 
a book related to going for the gold. Okay, so this is one of the reading challenge prompts that I have to satisfy. A book related to going for the gold. Okay, I'm going to have to think about this one. Hi friends, editing Brittany here. You can see me editing in the background. I spent a ridiculously long time while making that TBR video trying to figure out a book that would fit the prompt, a book related to going for the gold. And as I was editing, I realized how ridiculous I was because Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros would fit that prompt perfectly. Because first of all, if I was just going to find a book related to the word gold, the original original cover of Fourth Wing is nothing but gold, but also I relate going for the gold to a competition like the Olympics, but I believe if I'm not mistaken, Fourth Wing actually contains a competitive element to it. So I feel like Fourth Wing works really well for this challenge in multiple ways. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use Fourth Wing to satisfy this challenge prompt. In the video, I will go on to talk about how I selected Red Rising to satisfy the challenge, but I was nervous about doing so because that's another book that I planned on sitting down and reading immersively. And if I have an opportunity to start that book, I still will but it's no longer going to be an official part of my TBR because I'm going to be using fourth wing to satisfy this challenge poll. Okay, sorry if the angle has changed or anything like that. It actually took me quite a while to make a determination on what I might want to read for that challenge poll to read a book that's related to going for the gold. Now, I know which book I would like to read to satisfy this, but considering I'm reading fourth wing in January, I don't know if I would be able to get to this one as well, but that is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I've mentioned this in a couple of previous videos, but I want to reread this to see how I feel about the series because when I first read this back in 2017, I was a very, very different reader and I still found fantasy and sci-fi pretty inaccessible to me, but I feel like I would enjoy this a lot more now. And since I just purchased a beautiful special edition set from Very Loot, I want to make sure that I want to continue with the series. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to turn right around and sell that set. So this is a high priority book for me to get to, but this is another one that I want to immersively read. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to get to both this and Fourth Wing. I also should potentially mention that this is related to Going for the Gold because this is set in a dystopian kind of world where there is a color cast system where reds are at the bottom and golds are at the top. And if I remember correctly, our main character Darrow is trying to infiltrate the golds to take them down. And so that's why I think it would fit perfectly. So depending on how successful I am with Fourth Wing, if I do get through it in the month of January, even if there's only a couple of days left, I might go ahead and just start this one and carry it on over into February. And like I said, this is definitely a priority read for me. So we're going to see. I'm giving myself a couple of options. All right. Well, that one took quite a while to figure out. Hopefully this next one will not even so, so far we've had a read like my subscriber and then we've also had a challenge. So let's see what this next one gets. It's kind of hard to grab these because there's so many and this cup is so small. Okay, I have one. Ooh, this is a big one. I think it's another recommendation. Last One at the Party by Bethany Clift by Nana. Okay, thank you, Nana, for the recommendation. I've never heard of this one. Let me go ahead and pull it up. It says, it's November 2023. The human race has been wiped out by the 6DM virus. Six days maximum, the longest you've got before your body destroys itself. The end of the world as we know it. Yet someone is still alive. Alone in a new world of burning cities, rotting corpses, and ravenous rats, one woman has survived. A woman who has spent her whole life compromising what she wants and hiding how she feels to meet other people's expectations. From her career to her relationships to what she she wears and where she lives, she's made a lifetime of decisions to fit what other people want her to be. But with no one else left, who will she become now that she's completely alone? So this is definitely science fiction dystopian. I'm not a big dystopian fan, but like I said, these recommendations are about what you love. So we're going to see, let me just double check and make sure that this has an audiobook. Yes, it does. I can definitely get this from Audible if I can get it from nowhere else. So perfect. That will be a January read. All right, here's number four. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Okay, another recommendation. I've heard a lot about this one. Let me pull it up. This one definitely has a beautiful cover. There have been some stunning editions coming out that I definitely missed the mark on because I never thought I was going to be reading this one. So as much as I want to love this one, I'm almost hoping that I don't because I've missed out on so many beautiful special editions. It says, Cambridge professor Emily Wilde is good at many things. She is the foremost expert on the study of fairies. She is a genius scholar and a meticulous researcher who is writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore. But Emily Wilde is not good at people. She can never make small talk at a party or even get invited to one and she prefers the company of her books her dog shadow and the fair folk to other people she sounds a lot like me to be honest so when she arrives in the hard scrabble village of Rothsnick, emily has no intention of befriending the gruff townsfolk nor does she care to spend time with another new arrival her dashing and insufferably handsome academic rival wendell bambleby who manages to charm the townsfolk muddy emily's research and utterly confound and frustrate her but as emily gets closer and closer to uncovering the secrets of the hidden ones the most elusive of all fairies lurking in the shadowy forest outside the town she also finds herself 
on the trail of another mystery. Who is Wendell Bambleby and what does he really want? To find the answer, she'll have to unlock the greatest mystery of all, her own heart. So that actually sounds really, really sweet. It definitely sounds like, like a cozy fantasy. That's not typically my vibe, but I'm actually really kind of enjoying the vibes of this one. I'm excited about this one. So another recommendation that's going to be read. So, so far, three of the four challenge pulls have been subscriber recommendations. So let's see what number five holds. All right, let's go ahead and, okay, I'm going way, way, way down at the bottom. Oop, one just popped out of the cup. So we'll go ahead and go with that one. Yeah. A character driven novel. So that is another challenge prompt. So I just need to read a book that is primarily character driven. So for this one, I think I'm going to choose When We Were Bright and Beautiful by Jillian Midoff. This has actually been on my TBR since August of 2022. It is one of the book of the month books that I haven't quite gotten to yet. And this is one that I know that the more it sits on my shelf, the less I'm going to be interested in reading it. So I feel like it would be a good idea to just get it out of the way now. It says Cassie Quinn may be only 23, but she knows a few things. Money can't buy happiness, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Family comes first, and her younger brother, Billy, is not a rapist. When Billy, a junior at Princeton, is arrested for assaulting his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Cassie races home to Manhattan to join forces with her parents and older brother. While certain of his innocence, the Quins know that Billy fits the all-too-familiar sex offender profile, white, athletic, and privileged, that makes headlines and sways juries. So as the clock ticks and the law closes in, the family scrambles to hire the best defense money can buy. Meanwhile, Cassie struggles to understand why Billy's ex would go this far, even if the breakup was painful. She knows better than anyone how the end of first love can destroy someone. Her own years-long affair with the powerful, charismatic man left her shattered, and she's only recently regained her footing. As reporters converge outside their Upper East Side landmark building, the Quins gird themselves for a media-saturated trial. Cassie vows she'll do whatever it takes to exonerate her brother, but what if that means exposing her own darkest secrets? Dazzling and psychologically astute as it rockets towards an explosive ending, When We Were Bright and Beautiful asks, who will pay the price when the truth is revealed? So that actually sounds phenomenal. It sounds like it's going to be harder hitting, and this is definitely one that I'm going to use to satisfy a character-driven novel. All right, so those were the challenge pulls. Now let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. All right, everybody it is time for the very first round of gameplay for 2024 as you can see the board is exactly how we left it last time i will hopefully eventually be creating a new board because this one is looking a bit rough but i do want to finish this round of gameplay before i do that so we're going to go ahead and just continue on like we always have doing the six initial draws unless the board is unkind to me a lot of the pawns are already in their home base and both green and red have have every pawn out of start. In fact, green and red only have one active pawn on the board that needs to go into home base, whereas blue has two and yellow, poor yellow, has three with two in start. So as we get a little bit closer to the end of gameplay and my movements start becoming limited, I'm probably going to have to change up some of the rules of gameplay in order to make sure that I can continue moving every single round. But I believe that for at least this round, things are pretty much going to continue unhindered. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do the first draw of 2024. All right, well, the first draw of the year was a jack, and we are all very familiar with what a jack is at this point. It is a skip card. So that guy is going to be going with the rest of the jacks and the kings that I have set aside for when I need them. All right, the very first draw that I made for this round of gameplay was a jack, and we all know that is a skip card. So I just put that jack along with all of the other jacks that I'm currently hoarding and the kings, and I will use it whenever I need to. All right, we've got a nine and a yellow. I am going to go ahead and flip the board so we can see what we get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. So that was just enough to get yellow into his safety zone. Now, y'all know that there are no prompts here because these have now been reserved for challenge pulls. So I'm going to go ahead and do a challenge pull for this guy. And because I'm always allowed to have one pawn of every color out on the playing field, I'm going to go ahead and move him onto a free space. Next, I drew the number nine and the color yellow. And that actually landed me in the yellow safety zone. And so all of the safety zone squares are are actually challenge pulls. So let me go ahead and draw a sixth challenge pull and we'll see. I hope that it's kind to me. Another subscriber recommendation, Morgan is my name by Sophie Keach. Let me pull that up because I've never heard of that one before. All right, so this says, young Morgan of Cornwall lives a happy life in Tintagel Castle until King Uther Pendragon, with the help of the sorcerer Merlin, murders her father and tricks her mother into marriage. Furious, brilliant, and vengeful Morgan defies her brutal stepfather, taking up a secret education, discovering a lifelong affinity with the healing arts, and falling in love with a man far beneath her station. However, defiance comes at a cost. Used as a bargaining chip in her stepfather's war games, Morgan finds herself banned 
banished to a world of isolated castles and gossiping courts amidst the machinations of kings, sorcerers, and men. But some desires are not easily forgotten, and the search for her independence is a quest Morgan cannot give up. As the era of King Arthur approaches, she must use all her wit, knowledge, and courage to fight against those who wish to deny her intelligence, crush her spirit, and control her body. But in seeking her freedom, Morgan risks losing everything, her reputation, her loved ones, and her life. All right, so this is definitely a book that is going to be way, 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 way outside of my comfort zone. It's definitely not one that I've ever heard of before. It's a new release, actually. It just came out in June of 2023. So let me look it up on Goodreads really quick because I've never heard of this one. I've heard literally nobody talk about it. Okay, well, it's got a 4.19 on Goodreads right now with 3,806 ratings. All right, so that's really, really interesting. I hope that I like it because this is definitely not something that I would ever have picked up on my own. So we're going to see how it goes. All right, draw number three. All right, so that could either be a get out of start card or a move forward one, depending on what color I draw. Now, actually, at this point, the only pawn that I could potentially move from start is blue because I cannot move another yellow out from start because I already have one out front. So I will probably just be moving forward one. So let's see what color. Green. Okay, perfect. We have this guy right here and that prompt is summer. So I have to read a book with summer vibes. Not exactly the vibes we're probably going for in January, although I know some of you probably are wishing for summer right about now, but we'll go ahead and find a book that's giving summer vibes. All right, next I drew an ace and the color green. I moved forward one and I landed on the prompt to read a book with summer vibes. And so for that, I actually think I'm going to go with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett, because if you look at the cover, it is definitely bright and cheerful and like I would say more springtime than summer, but I'm going to go with it. Draw number four. Red. Perfect. Once again, he's over here. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. New to you author. Oh, I can definitely do that for sure. Then I drew the number nine and the color red. And this landed me on the prompt to read a new to me author. And honestly, I have so many to choose from because of all of the subscriber recommendations. So I'm not going to make an official selection in this video. I'm just going to use one of the subscriber recommendations to satisfy this prompt. Draw number five. All right, so with the 10, I could either move forward 10 or backwards one, and that's pretty much all going to be dependent on what the prompts are. So first, let's see what color I move in. Okay, so this guy, I could move backwards one, but I don't want to do that because I don't want him out of the safety. So I'm not going to touch him. If I move him backwards one, that's nonfiction. And if I move him forward 10, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Book talk favorite. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do book talk favorite because I actually have quite a lot of books that I have been saving or that exact kind of theme. So I definitely have quite a few that I can choose from for that. So let's go ahead and move that guy 10. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, next I drew the number 10 and the color yellow. That landed me on the prompt to read a book talk fave. And for that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and read The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. I've heard a lot of really mixed things about this one. It seems like a lot of people either love it or hate it, but this is definitely a book talk fave. Catalina Martin desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding, especially since her little white lie about her American boyfriend has spiraled out of control. Now everyone she knows, including her ex and his fiance, will be there and eager to meet him. She has only four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic and aid in her deception. New York to Spain is no short flight and her raucous family won't be easy to fool. Enter Erin Blackford, her tall, handsome, and condescending colleague who surprisingly offers to step in. She'd rather refuse. Never has there been a more aggravating, blood-boiling, and insufferable man. Catalina is desperate, and as the wedding draws nearer, Erin looks like her best option, and she begins to realize he might not be as terrible in the real world as he is at the office. So this is not just hate to love, but it's also fake dating, and it sounds really cute, so I'm excited to give this one a shot. All right, and then we have reached the very last draw. Perfect. I have my lone little blue guy here and we're going to move him one, two, three, four, five. Fantasy. I have just the book for this one. All right. And then my very last draw was the number five and the color blue. And that landed me on the prompt to read a fantasy. And of course, I was already going to be reading Fourth Wing for the month. So that was the book that I selected to satisfy that prompt. But I can also actually use the Morgan is my name prompt to satisfy that one as well. So I definitely have a couple of options there for that one. All right, everybody. That is it. That is the very first TBR that I'm making for 2024. And it is quite 
quite epic. There were going to be a lot of books that I read in January that were never on my radar before. Some of them that I'd never even heard of before because of your recommendations. So we're going to see how this goes. I hope that I enjoy them all. Out of all of the books on my TBR, these are actually the only ones that I currently own. All of the rest I'm going to have to get from my library. And if I do love them, then I will absolutely be purchasing them from my shelf. So we'll see. Please comment down below. And let me know if you have read any of the books on my TBR and what your thoughts are. I would love to know. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some kind of golden emoji in honor of the prompt of going for the gold. Y'all know that I love your comments. I love the engagement and it helps me and my channel so, so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to see you and connect with you in any of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.